Mr. Pandian, thank you so much for being part of the podcast. I'm really looking forward to our conversation. Same here. Jai Jagannath. Thank you. Jai Jagannath. Jai Jagannath. So, um, I'm of course going to begin with uh, who's this mystery man, Mr. Pandian? Nobody knows uh, in the country uh, who's this person because there's so much mystery around you because you don't give television interviews. You don't give news interviews only. And uh, everybody wants to know what it is about Mr. Pandian that people uh, wonder that he keeps to himself elusive person. So, introduce yourself. Uh, to the people of the country and to even Odias. Perhaps I I got inspired by Honorable CM. Hmm. <laughs> Correct. His style is that. that. Yes. And uh, till the other day, I was in uh, in the uh, in the Indian Administrative Service, huh. where we have to be behind the screen always. Huh. You do work for the government, so you don't get a chance to come out in front. But I've seen that you know uh, you. You take it to another level completely, you know, you, th even when there's criticism uh, about you, you are shy about it, you don't uh, respond, you don't uh, react, you just do your work, I've seen. So, um, is it because uh, you were directed by Naveen Babu or is it your natural self? I think one gets inspired being with him for more than a decade. <laughs> huh. You are working so closely with him. Huh. You get to see how he reacts to situations, how he reacts to uh, criticism. Huh. So you get inspired by him. Perhaps something, has, something of him has rubbed in me. <laughs> But you know, uh, he uh, he has a number of years of experience. You're a young bureaucrat uh, and you were posted in, you know, tough uh, areas yeah. like in Kalahandi and all that. It was like a phenomenal work that you did. So I'm sure as a young person, you would have lost your temper at times and you would have like, why are they writing this against me? What is this? You don't feel like responding ever? I, I thought that the work should speak. That's like nice. how Sachin said that my bat should speak. Okay. So our work should speak more than... So tell me what is it about uh, Mr. Pandian that uh, a five-term chief minister trusts him so implicitly? I also keep asking him this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still waiting for an answer from him. Okay. Perhaps we both share that commitment for people. Okay. Something which I got inspired from him. Right. In fact, uh, I got Punjab cadre initially in 2000. Hmm. And in 1999, Super Cyclone had hit Odisha very badly. Hmm. Odisha was in a very bad shape. Hmm. So, there was a dilemma of which cadre I should move. Hmm. So, I decided to go to Odisha because Mr. Navin Patnaik had taken over as Chief Minister of Odisha. And the director of our academy said that go to Odisha, you will get great, great chance to work. And there is an honest person who has become chief minister. Okay. So, you will get great scope to work. So, that's how I came to Odisha. And from that day, I got great uh, deal of uh, uh, independence to work in whichever post I have been. Whether it is sub-collector or additional district magistrate in Raurkela or as district magistrate in two districts, including his own district. What was the first meeting that you had with Mr. Naveen Patnaik? Tell me about that. Uh, I was sub collector, a young sub collector. He had come to inaugurate some projects in. Uh, Where was this? In Kalahandi, Kalahandi. Ramgad. Hmm. So that was the day he was, uh, it was 2003 or 3. Hmm. So that was the time India Today has had adjudged him as one of the top chief ministers of the country, first time. Hmm. So he had come with that uh, India Today and he was reading that <laughs> magazine. <laughs> Okay. So, that is the first uh, memory I have of our uh, Honorable Chief Minister. And what was your first impression when you met he him? He was unlike a political person. Okay. Whatever stereotype one has about a political leader, he was completely unlike. Very warm, very down to earth, very humble mm. and had an uh, eye for good work. He had come and he, uh, he immediately appreciated me for two, three things, which mm. I thought was very nice of him to tell mm. to such a junior officer. At what was time. the uh, work? He spoke about uh, the paddy procurement which I was doing. Okay. Um, which the administration was doing. Uh -huh. uh, Kalahandi used to be a food deficit uh, district. Yes. Kalahandi was known for those. Uh, I remember as a journalist, my generation of people would, Koraput and Kalihan, Kalahandi would, you know, be the, like the dark zones absolutely. of the country of famine, of uh, uh, food shortage and Our all starvation, starvation deaths, deaths. and yes. child sale and all those things used to happen. Yeah. 
So during our chief minister's time, the face of Kalahandi actually changed. He brought in uh, irrigation uh, in a large scale. Mm. So he transformed the gray areas of drought prone areas into green areas. Mm. So we have food surplus in Kalahandi. When I was posted there in 2003-04, we have to sell a lot of paddy. <laughs> that was a big challenge and ensuring minimum support price for uh, the farmers. And from subsistence agriculture that was practiced out there. Yes. And bare uh, subsistence, even Absolutely. if I might say that. Absolutely. You were selling it for rest of the state. Absolutely. That's mm. one of the biggest transformations the chief minister had done for Odisha. Mm. In 2000, we used to be a food deficit state. Mm. We used to depend on uh, Punjab, Haryana, other states for our own food security. Mm. The public distribution system will wait for uh, rail wagons to come from other states. Okay. So if their wagons are delayed, their food security and the, I mean, the public distribution system will get delayed. Mm. So the chief minister decided that he will Odisha has so much of water, so much yeah. of fertile land. Huh. So one of the biggest challenges he took was that uh, he will change, transform the agriculture of Odisha. Okay. So he invested heavily in irrigation. He invested in agriculture practices. Hmm. And in t seven years, eight years, Odisha had become self-sufficient. Huh. In food, food grain production, it became self-sufficient. Okay. In uh, in 11 years, Odisha became food surplus. That is one of the biggest transformations we bought. And now we are the third largest contributor to the country's food security. So from a food insecure state, Odisha has become a food surplus state. Contributing. The yeah, to absolutely. The, the third biggest contributor. Okay. So uh, the steps that he took, did he have like, were the people of Odisha completely on board? Was his political party completely on board when he was bringing these transformative changes? I think people were uh, very happy with whatever he was doing in hmm. every field. Hmm. Whether it is disaster management, where he has set global benchmarks, our food security, our tribal empowerment, our education, every field. That is why perhaps he got uh, pro-incumbency instead of anti-incumbency, yeah. which sets in even after one one term, anti-incumbency sets in. Yeah. He is now five-term chief minister and in every election, his uh, margins go high, his vote percentage is going high and perhaps he will repeat the same in 2024 as well. <laughs> okay. So, uh, sir, I wanted to ask you this, you know, uh, when uh, Naveen Babu started his career in politics, everybody was like, oh, he's, he's not a son of the soil, he's anglicized, he doesn't speak the language. So this kind of talk was done. But somehow, as you said, that there's no anti-incumbency with him. People of uh, Odisha uh, not just forgive him, not just accept him, they embrace him, despite him uh, not being one of the, like I said, son of the soil. Uh, so... How does that work? Uh, how are people of Odisha not so uh, parochial, should I say, or so uh, uh, language uh, chauvinistic that they want somebody who speaks fluent, pure, pure uh, Uriya? I think language is to connect with people, mm. the masses. He does it very well. Mm. In spite of whatever limitation one will accuse him of speaking the language, he connects with people the best. And that's what works in democracy. Correct. His language is the language of people. Hmm. He speaks from his heart, which people appreciate. He doesn't have anything to hide. He's, he's so transparent that people love him for what he is. So even with you, it's like that, right? Because uh, you're a Tamilian by birth. So uh, I would think that when uh, you, know, you chose to come to uh, uh, Udisha and work out here, you have a similar kind of a trajectory in the sense that you are not fluent with the language, though you learnt it. Uh, but again, you've managed to work out here for so many years now. So when you come to Odisha only, you are asked to write an exam. You have to clear an exam of 8th standard or something. Hmm. Then you clear the exam, then you take up posts here in the state. Hmm. Uh, so I, uh, I think language is uh, not a limitation if you know people and you understand their issues, hmm. you, you solve their issues. People are more concerned about uh, how transparent one is with them and how committed are, are they to their cause. Yeah. I think that, that really works and that's an inspiration one gets from the chief minister as well. See, but uh, even though I won't agree that he is not so fluent, hmm. he's... No, he, I'm he, talking about when he 
came to politics. Oh, that time, yeah. At right. that time, okay. he was okay. like he was considered like you know uh, somebody not uh, accustomed to you know living here in Odisha. Yeah. He'd come from outside, and he had uh, even his English uh, was uh, you know anglicized English. So, I think he used he used uh, all those things as his strength. Yeah. He was very fresh. He was open to ideas, and he saw everything with an open mind, which is very rare in a political situation. You come with preconceived notions, preconceived ideas. He was fresh in politics. He was uh, he, he didn't have much experience. So he came with open ideas, open mind. So that also helped him to a great extent. So when um, you worked with him, initially, if you remember, uh, even the politicians of uh, Orissa used to say that, you know, uh, he relies more on bureaucracy, not so much on politicians, not even his own party. Uh, he he wants his work done by, uh, by the bureaucracy and he will ignore uh, some of the criticism or some of the ideas that come from his own party workers. Uh, so how did bureaucracy uh, respond at that time? The reason I ask is because it's a, it's a problem that many chief ministers face, how to balance the needs and aspirations of the political class and how to deliver get things delivered by the bureaucracy. So how did Naveen Babu uh, deal with the bureaucracy? I think he supports good work, mm. transparent work. He stands behind you. I can give an example of what happened with me when I was uh, a young sub-collector in Dharamgad in 2003, Kalahandi 2003-04. I was uh, going all out against uh, rice millers who are doing uh, mischief hmm. in ensuring uh, minimum support price. So I was going really hard on them. Hmm. So all of them joined together and came in 2003 to the state headquarters and met the Food and Civil Supplies Minister. That time it used to be a coalition government between BJP and BJD. Mm. So uh, the coalition minister, I think he was from BJP. Mm. So they came and met. These millers had this idea as to how offices used to get transferred overnight mm. during the Congress regime. So they thought that will happen. They all came. Apparently they all collected some money and came <laughs> saying that we should get this officer out. So when they met the minister, food and civil supplies, he laughed and said that this is Navin Patnaik's government, you can't get a transfer, officer transferred for doing good Who work. Who said this? The minister told the, the, minister. the, minister told the rice millers. Hmm. So straight from here, they all came and met me in my office, night 9 o'clock or something. <laughs> they came and apologized and said that times have changed. Navin Patnaik is known for standing behind honest officers. We apologize to you. We will think that uh, business is cyclical. <laughs> we are going through a tough situation now. <laughs> so we'll adjust and we'll do good work now. Yeah. That's what they said. So there was no threat at that time. I mean, uh, of course, um, bureaucrats across the country have that experience where, uh, where, you know, business owners who are used to a certain way of doing it and if bureaucrats don't do it, like sand mining and, you know, those kind of mafias. Actually, the, the, I think the first year of his arrival, the chief minister arrested four or five super class contractors who were supposedly ruling the state. It sent shockwaves. He sent, uh, two, I think he, he sacked about uh, does, uh, half a dozen ministers on corruption. He arrested uh, three, four IS officers on corruption. So he, the narrative was very clear <laughs> that mm -hmm. if you do good job, honest job, he will stand behind you. So when you asked about how do bureaucrats perform in uh, uh, Navin Patnaik's regime, it's because of that uh, commitment, that support one gets from him, that he will stand by you. If you have done good job, transparent work, even if you do small mistakes, it's okay. He will manage it for you. But do it for the cause of people. That's what gives you that inner strength to work for the people. And uh, when you asked about... <laughs> Oh, I think, goodness. Yeah, good the, woman. <laughs> I mean, for my first interview, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, the lizard. I thought it's a bird, but I believe it's a... L I think it's a lizard. <laughs> so, good woman. Yeah. So, I'm going to get like a million hits for this interview, that means. So, yeah, so yes. Go ahead. So, he is very clear about where to draw the line between bureaucracy and uh, the political executive. Hmm. He knows what has to be done through the political executive how much you have to respect the political re executive and how much you have to get work done by the administration, the bureaucrats. So he doesn't cross that line. So this is uh, what you're telling me is about bureaucrats, right? Yeah. What happens about, uh, about his own party? Because there have been 
minor rebellions um and you know uh, mr pandian if you see the area around your state you know uh, there have been so many rebellions you know when you see jharkhand when you see uh, bihar you see uh, and you go a little further you see other states also you see madhya pradesh and and the, there have been rebellions within but somehow uh, it doesn't happen here uh, in orissa there have been minor rebellions but uh, navin babu seems to have quelled it all along i won't even call the most minor rebellions they are really small micro you can say mm. basically ego issues are super confident or over confident some people trying some mm. mischief if the leader is so popular amongst people if you are going to do a rebellion against him it's going to finish your political career and that is the very reason why in odisha nobody has tried any rebellion he is so popular you have to be there to see how people love him they wait for 4 5 hours just to have a glimpse of him for half a second what kind of love and affection people have for him yeah he is so i don't think anyone dares to do any rebellion there was that one incident yes. remember when you were in you were with London. him in, in yeah. yeah you in were London, abroad yeah. and there was that one and uh, at that time there were this in delhi there were lot of rumors at least that oh the toppling will happen and all that so how was that managed perhaps that was his bad time mr pyarimon mohtar's bad time he 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 decided to mount it yeah he decided to mount it i would say that only that hmm. it was his bad time he decided to do something like that the chief minister is so popular uh, the day we landed back from london Uh, you know the airport how close it is it yeah. shares a boundary with the chief minister's residence hmm. from the airport to his residence we took two and a half hours or three hours to come reach that was the kind of crowd so much of emotions and he broke all records in the 2014 elections <laughs> after yeah. the after the coup and he this was when in 2000 and, uh, you know uh, 12 in May. 2012 May. when there was this talk of this rebellion uh, and uh, there was you know disruption in in many states during that time but yes. here there wasn't yeah there tr- little bit uh, attempt was made hmm. but uh, the kind of people support i think everyone got scared nobody dared to cross the line yeah so the chief minister became more powerful after that i would say right and um, so do you think that that is the reason why mr modi and mr patnaik get get along so well because uh, mr modi is also a former chief minister and he also had this phenomenal support in his own state in gujarat so uh, do you think that uh, that is one of the major reasons why the two of them have a cordial relationship i would see from two three angles the relationship between uh, the honorable prime minister and the chief minister i have seen them interact from 2011 onwards i have been with them one angle is uh the respect they have for each other mm. they respect that people's mandate that genuine respect which comes when you enjoy the uh, confidence of people that is the first thing both of them have if you if you see both of them meeting for the first time you will see that as if they are they are great friends and meeting after a long time something like that you will feel mm-hmm. that's the kind of rapport both of them have the second is their commitment for uh, federalism H- why i am using this word federalism it was uh, upa 2 i remember they were mm-hmm. planning to introduce uh, nctc Hmm. national counter terrorism yeah. act or something mr chidambaram mr chidambaram yeah Dream child. and then they were giving more pass to rpf railway protection force hmm. through which they can uh, take action inside a state's territory all of it were encroaching the state's uh, hmm. jurisdiction domain that so, nctc was a uh, still born it yeah. never happened so so what happened those times all of them used to talk to each other mr modi madam jayalalitha oh. and uh, Uh, Navin Patnaik I remember they three decided to walk out of the uh, NDA meeting uh, NDC National yeah. Development Council meeting must be 2011 12 hmm. all three of them decided we should be the first ones to walk out opposing this uh, NDC so all three of them came out and gave statements and they met in Gujarat bhavan and in Tamil Nadu bhavan like that so hmm. they had that uh, rapo from that time onwards hmm. working for a cause working for federal principles keeping larger interest of country in focus right and do you think that that uh, cooperative federalism in a way uh, that was redefined in 2014 by the uh, center state relations that you have experienced and you have seen between odisha and the central government i would say so i would say so hmm. 
uh, to a great extent, lot of things have been ironed out, including the devolution. Even though we say that we have to get more uh, funds, but there has been systemic improvements on that score. But, uh, you know, many would think that uh, that is the cooperative federalism is what the bureaucracy will say or because you have uh, your state has good relations with uh, the center, that's why. But the, the detractors will say it's a fixed match between BJP and BJD. I'm asking you because now you're BJD. You are not just a bureaucrat. No, when, when BJD is not convinced about something, BJD has not gone ahead with uh, BJP. Mm. I'll give you two examples. One is the farmer's bill. Mm. We didn't support. BJD did not support. Farmer's bill was withdrawn. The second one was NRC. Our chief minister made it very clear it's not good for the country. Mm. So there are instances where uh, the chief minister or the BJD has not supported the center. In, mm. in, uh, in issues which concerns the nation and when BJD or the chief minister is convinced about it, they have supported. So how does uh, how does it work? Because um, when it comes to voting, uh, your party consistently votes with the BJP. But on issues, there are times when it doesn't work. Uh, but in spite of that, there seems to be like you know, in other states, uh, one hears about double engine sarkar. Here, it's not double engine sarkar. It's not a BJP government. But somehow, uh, you your state seems to be accruing the benefits of being a double engine sarkar. I think our chief minister believes in not doing politics when elections are not around. He believes strongly in work. Mm. He says that I am in this job to work for the people. Whatever will help the state, whatever will help the people of the state, he will take that decision at that point of time. He is very clear in his uh, approach. Let me come back to you. Otherwise, we are talking about the state and Naveen Babu all the time. But I want to come back to you. Um, You've been a bureaucrat for several years and uh, you uh, had the confidence and you have continued to have the confidence of the most powerful man uh, in the state. Why did you decide to uh, leave the bureaucracy and join the party? Okay. I decided because I was inspired by the chief minister, the way he was into public service. And it was not a grand plan or something for me to enter. I would say that... Uh, one year back, if you had asked me, hmm. are you going to join politics? I would have firmly said a no. And if somebody has, my batchmates will laugh if uh, they, they, they know that I have resigned and I have joined a party <laughs> because it was not in my plan at all. One year, eight, nine months back, I started touring the districts. And I saw the love and affection of people. It was very humbling. I thought that I should not be bound by bureaucratic rules in reaching out to the people. And that is the only reason why I resigned and joined, inspired by the chief minister. But I had no plans whatsoever to join politics. No but plans. Uh, over 10 years, you've been touring uh, the state with the chief minister, right? So how was this tour different from the earlier tours? So this time I toured on my own. Okay. I have always traveled with the chief minister. This time I traveled on my own to all... 30 districts, 146, 47 constituencies. We took this exercise because uh, after COVID, the footfall in the chief minister's grievance cell had reduced. We had uh, closed the grievance cell for two years. The chief minister's grievance cell. Okay, why? Because COVID. Ah, so okay. those times we closed. And after that, it never picked up. People had stopped coming. Very less footfall in the grievance cell. Mm -hmm. So the chief minister decided that why don't we reach out? Mm. This is the first time in a state, in any state, the chief minister office went and did grievance in a decentralized manner in uh, constituencies, in blocks. Mm. So with that, when I went there and uh, I committed to people that your problem, this problem will be solved in 10 days, this problem will be solved in 15 days, this problem will be solved in one month. And uh, the system rose to that occasion and with Honorable Chief Minister's guidance, whatever timelines we had set, it was all being met. It was completely magical. Uh, we had thousands of petitions, all transparent way made has been disposed of. So when I went to the people, when I met them, I realized that there is a strong connect with people. And uh, I thought being a bureaucrat, I won't be able to reach out to them. I have to get out of bureaucracy. Did the, it, it was an inner call. 
was it uh, what when did you tell navin babu this and was it the first time that this conversation happened between uh, you and navin babu where you said you want to join the party he also saw the videos and other things of people's interaction and everything so then both of us discussed and yes perhaps i should join and maybe i'll be of little help to him whatever way i could i could be so he didn't suggest to you before that become part of the party and so we never had a chance to have any discussion like that i was very clear in what i was doing i had no no plans whatsoever so which is what like uh, implementing what he tells you to do is that what you were doing implementing what he tells to do and also doing value addition implementation anyone can do okay. you have to add value you should have the guts to say sir this may not work out and he gave that freedom he gave that confidence at any time if you think something what he is doing may not be helpful to the people or may lead to corruption he gave the confidence to say sir this may not work well it may not go well fine he will ask me the reasons we'll say so it i have i have been part of uh, major decisions of the state whatever value addition you can do with a clear heart keeping only people in mind because i know his mind he is for the people and so it's easy to work you will know from 360 degree you will you will have some grassroots idea to tell so but it's like you know uh, powerful bureaucrats like uh, if i was to say like say uh, mr brijesh mishra with uh, with the uh, atal bihari vajpayee uh, you know they were they become like gatekeepers to their boss so many politicians don't like it because you can't get closer to the boss you can't talk so like say a uh, a number 2 or a number 3 uh, of of a political party then says that oh i have to go through this guy and he becomes the person who will interpret everything uh, so you know usually powerful bureaucrats have that issue with the party um there's a lot of jealousy also involved so how are you going to um, keep that uh, you know now that you are part of the party now you have to gel with the party people also isn't it yeah so how does that work how will you have that I think hr I, problem <laughs> no no i think resolved? I, i have been working for more than a decade with bjd because you know that chief minister's office is a political office hmm. so you interact with mlas mps panchayat raj institutions on a daily basis whatever is their issues they come to the chief minister he gives it to you for sorting out coordinate with people so we have a great rapport with uh, i don't think that's a issue at all hmm. i've been working with them so should not be a problem but you were like um, the unstated uh, thing the, you didn't have a post as such but everybody knew that all departments come under you no if you take the prime minister's office the principal secretary to prime minister mm. reviews all departments mm. it's the mandate which the prime minister gives right. it's the same in the chief minister's office i am not working as an officer there i am working on the directions of the chief minister in chief minister office all departments are under the chief minister every cabinet note comes to the chief minister office for approval every policy decision comes every posting which has of significance whether it is all india service or class 1 officers it comes to the chief minister so chief minister has control over all the departments and that's how accountability is fixed in democracy correct so you are there to help him aid him so there is nothing like who is junior who is senior or no you are representing the uh, chief minister in getting things done 